This is the port of New York, a city of ships, a city of people. Get up with the dawn to see the city when it's quiet. Quiet, but never fully at rest. Soon the streets, the waterfront, the rivers of the harbor will race with life. Early morning ferries cross the river carrying workers to thousands of jobs in the port district. For New York is the busiest harbor city in the world. The day begins and ends with ships. Passengers from other countries seeing America this morning for the first time. Or American citizens happy to be home again. More than one million passengers a year. And cargo? 154 million tons of cargo a year. Nearly half of all America's foreign trade, exports and imports, comes and goes through New York Harbor. It's going to be a busy day. A Coast Guard cutter will meet each ship to put aboard a public health officer. He will inspect the ship for diseases that might infect the people or animals of this country. A tugboat puts a pilot on board who will guide the ship across the harbor to its pier. From the moment the captain has briefed him, the pilot is responsible for the ship, her passengers, crew, and cargo until it is safely docked. The pilot is one of the port's experts. To dock such a massive vessel, as big as a small city, this job requires an expert. also requires the help of powerful tugboats and many dock hands. Every 20 minutes, day and night, an ocean-going ship enters or leaves the harbor. That makes 24 so far today. It makes a good day for the longshoremen who load and unload passenger ships. They carry the passengers' baggage from ship to pier for inspection by officers of the United States Customs Service. Everyone entering this country fills out a baggage declaration, listing items he bought abroad. A customs inspector compares the traveler's baggage with the declaration. He checks for items that are not allowed into the country. Then, when he has seen that everything is legal, the traveler is welcome home. To New York traffic. What a day this one's going to be. Welcome to commuter crowds. Join the morning rush of New York on its way to work. 13 million people. And the jobs the port provides support one quarter of them all. for the harbor. It's a school day, too. This is our country's only public maritime school. The ship itself is the classroom. Classes in deck work, the engine room, training for stewards, prepare high school students for jobs on ocean-going ships, and some as officers in the Merchant Marine.
immediately behind the docks, the produce market opens early. What moment of the day here, what items up for sale are not related to the port? Imported, imported, imported. But before the spices of the Indies can leave the pier, they must wait to be cleared through the United States Customs House. Here, brokers and freight forwarders, the men who handle cargoes from overseas, have their shipments cleared through customs. The paperwork involved with moving cargo from pier to destination is settled. And five billion dollars worth of imports every year are ready for distribution throughout the United States. Most of the imports leave the harbor by 10,000 trucks and 10 railroads. But much of the cargo remains a while within the port. It is processed and manufactured right here. Tidewater Industries, these are called. The magnificent natural harbor drew them first, providing ready access to the world of trade and to the rest of the country. These industries use goods and raw materials shipped directly from sources overseas. Trade, industry, and commerce. The Port of New York is the leading center of commercial activity in the world. And growing. It's a busy day, all right. High noon, the day half begun, and always more work than yesterday. 20,000 ocean-going ships a year put into New York Harbor, and many of them need repairs. New York shipyards are ready to do the job. Whether a minor pier side adjustment, or a major renovation. But today, not a single ship is built in New York. In fact, most of the ships that enter and leave the harbor fly the flag of other nations. The Leonardo da Vinci, flagship of the Italian line. She's due to sail this afternoon. She must be cleaned and scrubbed, repainted, made ship shape from stem to stern. Everything she might need for the return journey to Italy, the Port of New York can supply from its industries and markets. She's ready to sail with a crew of 556 and more than 1,000 passengers. passengers, and responsibility for the United States Coast Guard. The protection of life at sea is one of the Coast Guard's primary duties. Rescue depends on swift communications. At Amver headquarters, computers and teletype do the job. Amver is the Atlantic Merchant Vessel Report System. Run by the Coast Guard from New York Harbor, it is the most important link between a ship in trouble and rescue. But today, the trouble is not at sea. Harbor police rush to the scene. Fireboats stand ready. Fire. Fire on the waterfront.
its toll. Day by day, the port of New York is growing old. But out of the ashes and the decay, the port of New York is also building. Planners for the port look into the future, they can point to progress. By the year 2000, they hope to change the waterfront into a showplace of passenger terminals, apartment buildings, and parks. Most of the cargo operations now handled on Manhattan Island would be transferred to outlying areas. Of all the plans for modernizing the harbor, none is more spectacular than what is happening here on Manhattan's west side. By 1970 or thereabouts, the World Trade Center will be completed on this site. The world's tallest building, 110 stories high, will change Manhattan's skyline and the port as well. Here, 50,000 people will work to improve international trade. Plans for the future and echoes of the past. This is Ellis Island, once America's great immigration portal. The buildings on the island lie abandoned now. But there was a time, not so long ago, when Ellis Island was the doorway to the new world. A doorway opened wide to more than 15 million immigrants. The Irish and the Poles, Germans and Italians. What will become of Ellis Island now? Plans have been made to transform it into a national monument devoted to the history of immigration. But other areas of the port have already been renewed. Across the bay in Newark, the biggest waterfront program ever undertaken in the harbor is underway. When it's finished, it will be able to handle 11 million tons of cargo yearly. Along the waterways of Brooklyn, 13 new piers can berth 28 ships. New Yorkers realize that unless port facilities are modernized, other eastern seaports will take the lead. For the life of the waterfront is as essential now to the life of the city as it always has been. Progress depends on people and their good, hard work. The workers in the port depend on fair wages and decent working conditions. But more and more, the workers are becoming worried. Will machines take over their jobs? See, uh, I feel that uh, automation, it's true, it's making the work 100% easier. But at the same time, it has taken man hours away from us. We would take a, uh, at least a week before the, to handle a ship. It's only taken us about three days now. And uh, we're not fully automated yet. So I guess by the time we're fully automated, we can expect about two days a week. Machines are important and becoming more so. But the port cannot function without men and the jobs they do. When the longshoremen become dissatisfied and call a strike and walk off the job, the harbor stops dead. When the harbor doesn't move, it's an international emergency. Imports are blocked, exports stranded. The harbor must keep moving. When it does, the day is saved from coast to coast and in the markets of the world. In the home port, life returns to normal. Hectic, loud, crowded, but productive. Once again, ships of the world converge on New York Harbor. The great ocean liners and freighters bringing the world's trade and carriers.
carrying away the exports of America. <laughs>